Hello, it's Claire from Angelix Gallywags, and today we're going to have a look at Natufian whiteware and pre pottery Neolithic lime plaster figurines. Today has been <laughs> a bit of a disaster. I almost didn't post this video, but I'm going to show you all of my um, mistakes and experiments. So right now we're just going to create the whiteware bowl, plain old bowl. Um, I've just poured some plaster of Paris into a pot and I'm adding the water. They suggest that you do two parts plaster of Paris and one part water, but I just kind of mix until I get what I want um, out of it, which is more of a mouldable mixture um, than a pourable liquid, which is usually what plaster of Paris is. So I've got it to how I want it. I'm wearing gloves because the addition of water to plaster of Paris gives an exothermic reaction. To be honest, I didn't notice it at all until it then starts to cure a bit later on when it's drying out and it starts to smoke and you think, oh, it's getting hot now. But whilst I was making it, it wasn't hot at all. Um, however, I would recommend using gloves and a mask because the um, powder gets everywhere. So here I'm just shaping it into a very, very simple bowl and this is harder than it looks. The next one is a pre-pottery anthropological figure of um, a double-headed human. And I'm doing the same. I'm just mixing some thick plaster and attempting to make this figurine. This was really hard because I don't think I added enough water. So it dried out really, really quickly. But also once it's dry, it becomes very, very brittle. So it's much harder to sort of mould the thin neck with the thicker head. Um, and I didn't have a hope in getting the nose features um, because once it had solidified, you just had to touch it gently and it sort of, the head fell off. Um, so right now I'm just adding a little bit of water to pieces. Um, and I'm hoping that that will help me to stick on the heads. Plaster wouldn't be one of my favourite mediums to work with. And in the past, I've only ever really used it for um, frescoes and making stucco. So this modelling plaster is really new to me and much harder than it looks. So I decided to go back to something I felt familiar with, which is a paper mache mixture. I love working with paper mache. And it is actually a mixture of plaster of Paris and pulp, paper pulp. Um, so I was hoping this might be a bit easier. Actually, it wasn't that much easier. It gave me a little bit more pliability. It was a little less brittle. But it still it was very clumpy and very difficult to mould. And again, once it had hardened, it was really quite difficult to um, mould. So I decided to make have another attempt on the Natufian whiteware, but this time using paper mache. <laughs> I thought this was going to be much easier. It really wasn't much easier at all. And the resulting bowl, whilst it possibly looked a bit more like the Natufian whiteware bowl, um, it really was very cumbersome and not easy to form. And um, even though this is one of my favourite mediums, I didn't enjoy making it into a bowl. However, it did give me an idea because I had read somewhere that the Natufians mix the plaster with ash or um, gravel. So I thought, oh, I've just had a fire. I've got some ash. It wasn't cold. It wasn't hot. It was cold ash. So I went and grabbed some ash, mixed it with the plaster and added some water. So this was my great experimentation. And it was <laughs> it was a bit of a disaster because really really the um paper mache was a bit more cumbersome but the ash with the plaster was very cumbersome 
indeed and really was very difficult to mould. So I must say this week's video is full of my mistakes and I'm not really sure how I would rectify them. At the end of the day when I painted them they looked okay but I was a bit disappointed in the result. Here I am just modelling to the best of my ability this ash and plaster mixture. And again, I found I was finding it very difficult to give the models a neck. Um, so once again, the head looks like it's just sort of sat on the shoulders. Just using black paint here. And what I decided to do, so these models in real life, back in the Mesopotamia times, their eyes were shell, which was stuck on using bitumen. The result is, 8,000 years later, are eyes that look like they've got a black outline, um, with a little nose and the mouth. So that I guess the black is meant to represent the bitumen. Um, I guess you could use shell, maybe eggshell, and break up bits of eggshell and stick it on. But to be <laughs> quite honest, I was giving up at this point because this was really hard. I'm just now painting and giving it the shades that are in the picture. I've got the picture in front of me and I'm just painting on the features and I'm also going into the any sunken areas just to give it a bit more depth I suppose with different shades of black grey. Um, the plaster and the paper mache is absorbing the paint almost immediately I put it on. So I'm having to work quite quickly. So just adding the eyes. The nose and the mouth. And I must say, if my models actually had a neck, I think I'd be fairly happy with them because once the face is on, they do look quite like the photo. It's just a shame about the lack of a neck. However, since I did these this video, since I recorded it, I've gone away and I've written my post about it on my blog. And I found out that what the Natufians did and the pre-pottery Neolithic people did was that they built up these figurines around a twig or a branch or um, something solid, a bone or something. And they added the plaster and then the plaster was built on top of the twigs and the bones. Um, I shan't be trying that. I shall be moving on to something different next week. But that might be an option um, and might be quite fun to do actually. Something I haven't shown you here is that I attempted a moulding session inside a balloon. So I poured the paper mash, uh, I poured the plaster of Paris mixture into a balloon, let it harden slightly and then tried to mould it within the balloon. I had read and researched that um, because the plaster gets hot once the water is added, that possibly this was a safer way for young children to do it. Honestly, mine did not turn hot at all until it was drying. Um, so for me, I would be very happy giving this to my children to do um, so long as they had gloves on. So just adding the eyes here, this is fairly self-explanatory. I'm making a watery mixture just to add some texture and a bit more depth to the models. I'm sort of <laughs> painting in a neck with the hope that maybe it will look like a neck. I don't know. But as I said in my very first video, 
There are lots of times that the hands-on activities I do are not greatly successful and this was one of those times. But I'm still fairly happy. I made some labels like I've been making with all of the artefacts. I've made some museum labels for each one of these for you to download. The download is below. I mean, they're not horrendous. If I took off my glasses, they'd be even less horrendous because I couldn't see them. So there are my Natufian whiteware and pre-pottery Neolithic artefacts. Next week, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Gobekli Tepe model. Please do like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye.